I'm Clement Belizer. I'm the director of the 166 project, and we're here in Moanéakul, where we're doing the second phase of Project 166, the pilot project, where we're doing yellow house repair and red house reconstruction. The 166 project is a project that's camp to neighborhoods. We have people. We at the beginning we chose six priority camps and. In IOM's register, these people, they came from 16 neighborhoods. And this is where we got the name 16 Neighborhoods, 6 Camps. As we're bringing them back into the neighborhood, this is what we mean when we say we're rehabilitating it. Improving access, mobility, improving uh, minimum life conditions, access to basic services, water, sanitation, electricity. We have 1.2 kilometers of road that are paved outside. We started by doing a, a risk mapping of the area. And uh, as we do in the evaluation of uh, buildings, we have a, a color code, red, yellow, and green, as red being a no-go, yellow being areas where you could probably do mitigation work and green where it's practically safe to build. We're showing how people can live together on a small space. We're trying to densify by doing two-story housing and creating spaces for kids to play, playgrounds, etc., etc. Showing that even though they're living here on a slope, there are ways to build and to build back safer. <laughs> In this neighborhood, we put together what we call a community platform, which is a representation of uh, the citizens living in the neighborhood. With them, we did the urban planning exercise, and they expressed the priorities of the neighborhood. It not only meets the needs of the community, it meets also the needs of the what the government thinks is necessary, and also the central government and the local government, which is the mayor's office. For every single uh, labor being employed, the community platform has to validate to make sure that the people that are going to be working as labor here or whatever, as masons, as uh, uh, foremen, they come from the community. And also we have a, a minimum of 40% of women that have to be employed. Doing nice projects is one thing, but making them sustainable is another thing. And the only thing for people with such low income to make a, a project sustainable is ownership. Like, as you can see, water here, which is essential for re uh, reinforced concrete, is being provided for free by the community and everybody has their turn where they have to provide water. Rubble removing, we had a, the debris project was here, but after the debris project left, Whatever is left to do, they move it themselves and everything. That's, I, we can consider that as some sort of sweat equity. Ah, we get business here. We have a We have a component that's uh, looking at uh, economic opportunities so, uh, and uh, income generating activities. So the best way for, this, for the community to profit of this is that business has to prosper. First phase, we had funding for four camps and eight neighborhoods for $30 million US. And this is being funded by the FRH, the Fonds de Reconstruction, HRF, Haitian Reconstruction Fund of the Commission, and there are donors. And we're still looking, it's, a, it's a initially a $70 million project. So What's happening is that we're doing eight neighborhoods and we had funding for four camps. The fifth camp, we had the contribution of Red Cross that cleared the fifth camp and we did the sixth camp with uh, res residual amounts from the clearing of the four camps. So all the camps are gone and now we're looking for funding for rehabilitation for the eight other neighborhoods. What 
doing right here is being replicated as we're speaking in other neighborhoods. And this is our way of developing tools for the municipalities to understand how to go about urban planning situations. Not only this can help us correct what has been done wrong, but also in the future, this helps us to plan and to understand the needs and the necessities and for us to do a better planning, urban planning exercise for the future. Yeah. Moi rêver, 